Well, hello everyone. Hello, good morning. Um, truly excited to, to have um, everyone here today. Welcome to session three of the InnoFact um, show. And um, we are gonna be talking about the guest experience and, um, and, and reimagining guest experience and well-being. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm truly excited to be here and, and wanted to go ahead and welcome our, our, our three, um, three panelists here. Um, I'll go ahead and quickly introduce myself. You know, I'm Calvin Stovall, the Chief Experience Officer of, um, of Iconic Presentations, and I'll be serving as the moderator for today's panel discussion. And basically, we specialize in, in helping our brands um, become or attain iconic status. And so I want to go ahead and let Ari and Holly and, and, and the other Calvin go ahead and introduce themselves. So Ari, why don't you start, um, give us a brief introduction of, of you and, and what you do. Hey everyone, uh, and, and thanks everybody for coming here today. And my name is Ari Mork. I'm originally from Norway. Uh, I live here in the States and uh, uh, I'm a digital marketing coach uh, for hotels where I specialize in, in uh, particularly looking at the employee experience and, uh, and the customer experience utilizing two digital tools today. Uh, because digitalization is, is a big part Part of, of uh, especially after in the aftermath of COVID, uh, so that's pretty much what I'm doing, and I hope you all will be here to enjoy this session. Awesome, welcome, Ari. Thank you so much. How about Holly? Welcome, Holly. Glad to have hey. you today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much. So my name is Holly Steele. And my background is as a hotel concierge in a 750 room hotel in San Francisco. I was there for 17 years before I left my day job a long time ago. Uh, because really now, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's almost 28 years ago that I left uh, because I wrote the textbook on how to uh, think and act like a world-class concierge. And I have been out uh, training people to do this for all of these years, uh, basically all over the world. And it's something that I am still incredibly passionate about. And right now with these new changes and what we're gonna talk about today, this passion is really literally on fire because everything has changed. And so yeah. being involved so long, um, it's really, really interesting what's going on right now. So I hope to be helpful. So thank you for letting me be here. Awesome, Holly, thank you. We're excited to have you and looking forward to hearing your, your commentary on these questions. All right, now the other Calvin, hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to uh, cause some confusion today. <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, not a problem. <laughs> you know, this is a nice problem to have. I think I've met maybe three other Calvins in my entire life. So um, if, if we confuse the audience a bit, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm actually okay with it. Um, awesome, awesome. Yes, so my name is uh, Calvin Taloki. Um, I spent about 20 years in the hospitality industry. Um, a little more than that. A little more than that because I did go to school for hospitality. Most of that is, uh, was in revenue management. And um, recently I started um, RevPar Media, which is a social media agency designed to help uh, hotels and, and hospitality space truly tell the story um, across social media. Um, I, I, you know, as it ties into t uh, to today's panel, this is where the guest experience starts. And I think as an industry, we are, we're missing the boat on, on the power of social media and how effective it can be as a revenue stream and as a customer generation tool. Um, and I, I believe a lot of agencies don't truly understand the business and I, I fall somewhere in the middle of that. So uh, I'm excited to really to get into this today because everything we do, regardless of what department we were in, whether it have been a concierge revenue, um, accounting. It, ultimately, it's all about the guest experience. That's what that's what we're here to do as an industry is to service the guests. So I'm excited to get into this. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you, Calvin. We're, we're excited to have you join us as well. So let's let's just go ahead and get get right into the meat of this thing. Um, let's talk a little bit about the 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 impact of the pandemic and um, what it's had on the hospitality industry. I'd like to hear, in your opinion, in, you know, one of you or, or, or all of you. Can each of you share what you think is the biggest challenge we face as an industry post COVID um, and going forward? I, I think I'll jump in here because th this is a, a big part of the passion. So, all right, so for the last 28 years, I've been teaching people how to navigate the emotions of service. And now the emotions 
have taken over. The emotions have taken over the guest. The emotions have taken over the team. The, the, the emotions are running so high right now that we cannot possibly go back to like, okay, let's just reopen. We won't need to talk about this. We're just gonna shove everything under the rug and we're just gonna act like everything's okay. But everything's not okay. It's not okay because everyone has been through a trauma. We have all been traumatized by this. Our industry was traumatized by this. People lost their jobs. They lost their homes. They lost their loved ones. We have been traumatized. We can't ignore that there is enormous grief going on, that there is enormous anger, that there is emotion on all sides, and we have to look at this. We have to face this. We have to head, we really have to hit this head on. And if you need help in your companies with professionals who know how to do this sort of thing, because I think that people have PTSD, that th <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are things that yes. are really seriously going on. So, like, so as we move forward in our conversation today, I just like to, you know, I, I want to share some ideas of how to help and how to do this and how to talk about it. So I don't know if this is the exact right place for that. So maybe some other people have some thoughts, but this to me is the crux of what's happening and we cannot ignore it. It's always been an emotional business, but it's completely on steroids now. And, and it was something that we didn't anticipate. We thought people would just come back and be grateful, but instead they've just become more, um, you know, needy and entitled. So, it, and we don't have it. So anyway, it's really interesting to me. I'm quite fascinated by it because it's like a new game. Yes, yes, Holly, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I'm sure the people watching this right now agree with you as well, because this whole pandemic, this COVID thing, it was what I like, I like to call it a plot twist. Um, <laughs> it was definitely a plot twist um, in our lives. And, and I know we like those in movies, but we certainly don't like them in our lives. Um, so I agree with you 100. Um, percent Anyone else want to want to talk about about this? Um, answer this question a little bit. Sure. I, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll jump into that. I I think I think Holly made a lot of great points, and you know what it is. I don't know if there's one biggest challenge, but I would say she's pretty hit on the head. It's the people, right? That's what this all ultimately comes down to. Whether you're talking about the guests, your employees. Um, I mean, even as, as, as owners and, and operators, you know, every, we're all human. We've all been impacted by this. And that's, that's the thing about this sort of situation. There's no one who is immune from it, right? So it's, 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 it's dealing with how do, we, how do we get back to what we, what we should have been? Because in, in my opinion, a lot of what I've seen across the industry is service has been slipping for a long, long time. And I, I look at this as an opportunity for the, for the industry to reset. Yes. We were forced to wipe the slate clean. We didn't want to, but somebody came in and wiped it for us, right? <laughs> yes. So yes. now, now we have to we we have to start over, and we have to build it back better than it was. You know, when when you I, I, just a quick example when I you know, I flew an airline you know some years ago, and when I got to the check-in desk, and they said, "Hey, make sure you're at the gate because we'd like to leave early." And then, you, and then, and then, and then, and then you get to the gate, and everybody's lined up greeting you and thanking you for for flying with them on the way into the plane. That shouldn't be shocking, right? right. That should be I how agree. it is. Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately, it got to a point where that was like a unicorn. This was like, whoa! Can you can you believe that people did this? That's what yeah. hospitality is all about, and that's what it should be. And we need to get the right people back treat them treat treat them properly pay them properly but also get rid of the people who aren't the right ones and Absolutely. and build it back so that's the biggest challenge how mm -hmm. we solve it i don't have all those answers but that's right. the, that's the challenge <laughs> right right I, I agree with you yes yes sir yes sir yeah Are, can, yes sir go ahead Holly. Yeah. go ahead yeah, I, I just kind of want to jump in with with just some ideas because I think it's really important to um, when you say what the problems are to talk a little bit about what some of the solutions are. And literally this morning, I wrote this this morning. So when, uh, because the idea of this is like when Calvin just said, we need a reset. So I got into this whole thing this morning about how do we recover? 
How do we recover? And so I thought like, you know, in, in our industry, we're lucky because we understand the value of huddles. We know that you have to meet. We know that you have to have a conversation. We know that you have to not only give, you know, like information back and forth, but there's a, a real purpose to having these short meetings. And we are set up for that. A lot of industries are not, but we are. So I thought of a way to have a six part huddle for the return, which is the first thing we need to do is to receive. And we as leaders need to receive by listening. We need to listen to what is going on with people in their lives, what's going on back at work, what do they need? We really need to listen. So the first piece mm -hmm. is to receive. And then the next piece is that we need to actually have a response to what we hear. So maybe that response doesn't happen immediately, but the response happens within till the next huddle for the next week. And we ask for, well, what are your solutions? What are your ideas? And then we come back with the response and mm -hmm. we understand this is what we heard. This is what we can do. This is what we can't do because there are certain requirements that we that are there that we just can't do. Then we have to do a remember. What are we here for? What's our purpose? What are we really doing here? And maybe even retell some stories of the week. I, I teach right. something that I call the psychic salary, the other paycheck, the paycheck of the heart. So then we tell these stories. Well, what, what else did you get? And so then we start to turn it a little bit and then we rejoice in these things and we reward people for this. We rejoice, we reward. And then the last piece is that we reach. We do a little intention of reaching for something aspirational and something yes. that next and how to keep us revitalized and revived. And I literally put it together this morning before this call, because I thought we have to give people a framework, some way to speak about this. So there's your reset. Well, Holly, that was, that was great. That was, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I think I want to make sure Ari, you know, did you want to share it? Because that what you just talked about, Holly, leads into my next question. But I did want to give Ari an opportunity to share something if he had something to, to respond to that question. I, I think uh, Holly, Holly kind of summed it up really good here because it's, uh, we have, as I see it, we have two different challenges. We have a challenge where the customers now is anxious to get back to visit the hotels and uh, travel again. On the other side, we have employees that are anxious and they are not, uh, more concerned about coming back to the hotels again. So right. that's so, so in a challenge where we have uh, a skeleton crews and, and that we have to be also thinking about that, that how can we avoid overwhelming the people that's now there to serve uh, uh, the customers now that are traveling. And I think all these points and, the, and the, the huddle list that she put on that was, was on, on point to do take on some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, so I think you, you guys are great. You hit some, made some great points there, but, and, and, and you, you let this, this, this conversation leads right into my next question, talking about the employee. Um, and we know, we all know the importance of the employee experience and ultimately how that impacts the guest experience. Let's talk about the impact the pandemic has had on the staff a little bit in general. And, and what are your thoughts around this topic? I think Holly, you made some great points on giving some people a framework around that. But we really would like to hear your opinions on, you know, what 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 are you seeing out there? How do you how do you think this has impacted the, the staff? Well, um, I, I don't think there's there's any way to measure, you know, mentally the, the impact this has had on on people, on all of us. You know, again, this has literally impacted every person on the planet, right? N nobody's been through something like this in, in their lifetime. Um, and it's 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 hard to measure that impact. Uh, I, I think, you know, kind of tying in what we were talking about before, it, it, as a, as it pertains to getting the right people back, and you know, it's making sure that that we're treating the you know the right people the right way because we're going through this hiring crisis now where we're ha we're struggling to find people, we're struggling to get people back to work, and people want to blame, you know, the the uh, the stimulus and things like that. And these these yeah. may these may yeah. play a part. Right. But if you have the right people and you're paying them properly and treating them properly, they'll come back to work because the right people, the hospitable people, the people that want to be in this industry want to do it. They they 
want to be out there working and serving people. They have that spirit to serve. And we have to create a situation where where people are, their, their opinions are heard. You know, when we do these surveys, things are things are being executed on. You know, I know a lot of people I've again, I've been from, you know, front desk up to executive level. And at, the more you move up, the more you hear from people. Well, nobody listens to what we're saying anyway. Like, why would I even why would I even fill out the survey? And that may or may not be true. But the fact that they feel that way is an issue. Right. So we, it, we need to create an environment where people feel that their their opinions matter and 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 are valued and i i think that all comes down to not being overworked that's a big thing in this industry too because our business is never closed right i mean mm -hmm. lucky if you're in a restaurant i guess you know you, you gotta close at some point <laughs> yeah but I, you know, <laughs> right. I, I spend most of my time in hotels which which right. never close and right. you know then it's oh, or, you know somebody calls out you've, you've got to come in that shit needs to be covered it's not like we can just ignore it and and people after a while because there's a lack of training in most places when you show up there's there's no you know, rigid training. It's, it's kind of just thrown into the wolves, sink or swim type of deal. And that's one way to learn, but it's also one way to get frustrated and burnt out really quickly. Yes. You know, yes. so we need to do a better job with that. We do need to do a better job with pay. I'm not advocating for overpaying for, for jobs that aren't necessarily worth it, but we're going into a, a, a phase and we're already here with, with hybrid roles. You're going to have people that are front desk and bartender at the same time or, or, or something, depending on, on how your hotel is set up. Let's pay that person appropriately because they're taking on more responsibility. Give them uh, a supervisor management title and give them that responsibility. The right person wants that responsibility to be able to make an impact in the place that they're working. You know, so these are just a couple of things I think that we need to look at as an industry. Again, we've got to reset and rethink. We can't go back to what we did before because clearly yes. a lot of it wasn't working. I think there was a, a upper echelon of the industry that did it right. And majority of the industry just, it was, we were just skating by. We're just worried about ROI. And again, this is funny coming from, from the revenue manager on the panel, right. but we're all, we were just worried about if they pay, then fine, whatever. You know, and we 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 got to get away from that. Yes, I agree. Somebody just said, "Preach, man, preach." People need to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I, Calvin, I what I really hear you saying something really interesting that we hadn't talked about prior, which is interesting. Which is about we we had talked about valuing. Um, you are really good employees, right? Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so let's look at what happened in this last year. I don't think that we can just also forget that a lot of people were let go by text. Uh, they were completely disrespected. So um, how do you want yeah, people? Oh yeah, well now we're open, come back when they were so disrespected and marginalized and they were invisible and all of those things. So the words respect and dignity, but I wanna tell a little story that uh, in the world of the concierge, okay? Because in um, the Netherlands, in, in Holland, um, no concierge lost their jobs. What they did was they knew that all of the people in the, in the concierge desk were very, very high level uh, employees and they respected them and they knew that they were really great. And they also knew that they had to lay some people off, but they did not lay them off. Okay, because they were not just a commodity. It, they so they kept them all on. And to Ari's point, or they, you know, they they cross trained or they did everything else to keep the hotel open for the hotels that stayed open. No concierge lost their job. In the United States, most concierge lost their jobs. Why? Off with their heads. They didn't count, didn't matter because there weren't guests and, you know, just an amenity. It was a completely different way to look at it. Whereas the people who are concierge, who are professional concierge in Lake Clay Door, who spend their life as a hotel concierge, who yes. are absolute professionals, okay, were dismissed, some of them by a text. And, wow. and, I, many, I would say, let's say 70 or 80% of the industry that happened to, whereas mm -hmm. in another country where they were respected, it did not happen to. And so that is a really important piece. Everybody needs to take responsibility for how they handled the situation that was so traumatic to begin yes. with. And right now, what's also happening is that the guest 
who is returning. I alluded to it before, but this is a really important piece. My friends who I've interviewed about these sorts of things, because I'm very riled up about it, tell me things like this, where it used to be three guests in a month in a five-star hotel who would kind of go off on you and be obnoxious, right? Anybody can handle that. I, that's what I've been teaching all these years. I, you know, how do you handle yourself? Work it, work it out. Fine. Now it's become some, three times in a day. Well, if three times in a day from three times in a month where you're already exhausted and traumatized and don't have any capacity to handle that, th this is a major deal. What's going on? So it has to be twofold right now. Or three, of course, the employee, we need to pay attention and give them the dignity and respect and the listen and all those hours that I just said in the huddles and really do that. But we also need to take a look at our relationship with our guests and make a decision as to whether how they treat your employee and if they go off on people and if they are just absolutely horrible, like just so entitled that that you can't really take care of them. We need to step up and say, you know what? we're not gonna be able to take care of you. And we escort them out, that we fire customers. And when we're willing to fire customers, people will come back because they will feel that there's some dignity around who they are and that they're not just invisible. So I think that is really important. And we also have to make some new rules of engagement, just like the airlines have done with their customer to be like, you don't do it we're not flying and you're out of here. And I'm not saying that we're arresting our guests, but honestly, we like what you said, game over. We got to start again. And one more thing right now, Food and Wine Magazine, anyone, if you haven't read it, go online or get Food and Wine Magazine, three articles in Food and Wine, one called How to Tell Your Customer to F Off, Swear to God. Second one, the customer is not always right. And the third one, they're taking on Danny Meyer in like, it's not always about yes. And I'm also writing an article about it because I'm fascinated by it. Because it's really changed. So those are the things that we can do to begin to open up to be the employer of choice. So yes, pay people, but let people come back and feel seen and heard and respected. Yes, Holly. Oh, great, great points. Great points. And um, I want to give, give Ari uh, an opportunity to chime in here um, before we move on to the next question. Um, Ari, any any points you'd like to anything you'd like to add, or we can? Move uh, on? I just want to as kind of sum up that I think they, the, both Calvin and Holly have some made some great points. <clears throat> I think the 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 it's like we're going to touch into the customer service and customer experience down there, but I think one point that 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 kind of Holly in, is into and that hotel knows a lot about is customer care. But what we need to do instead of so much focus on customer care is more employee care. And it's like, yes. where, where does the employee care come in the place? Because that's what I think is getting what Holly was touching down to that we left so many hotels left out and didn't stay in contact with their employees during this, this pandemic. And, and there were so many opportunities, even if you lay them off or you follow them, follow them up, stay in touch with them, show that they, that they are human beings, because that's going to be important in the aftermath, Matt, but yes. when it comes back to like now, now we are in a, in a crisis where we can't get labor back, because exactly because we didn't stay in touch with them, we didn't follow up with them, we didn't show that we cared about them, and I think that's so important to understand and learn from this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, think I, I just want to say really quick before we move into the next thing, Ari just gave me a great visual of, you, you know how we have, you have an attack dog, right? You know how to make an attack dog, an attack dog yes. is you starve it and you treat it horribly. So when somebody rings that doorbell, it's ready to fight, right? I had Shih Tzus in my past, little fluffy, nice dog. You treat them well, they're on your lap, you, you pet them, you feed them, you walk them. People come to the door, they're all over them, hugging and kissing. It's not too different with people. Ah, nice analogy. Nice analogy. I love that. I love that analogy. You know, it, it you know, and, and the thing is about it, I mean, we're talking about the emotional, uh, you know, aspect of the employees and, and the customers and things of that nature. 
But we, we, we also have a competitive landscape that we're dealing with. And I'd like to talk a little bit about technology. A question came in about robots and how they can enhance the customer experience. And I want you to touch on this a little bit because um, we know we both, we need both. We need, we need technology and human touch. I think Ari talked a little bit about burnout, you know, and, and being able to, um, you know, maybe in head, use technology to help, you know, uh, where the, so, the, so the employee can focus more on taking care of the customer. But you, we know you got to have both, which is one of the biggest challenges I hear from a lot of franchisees, hotel owners, operators, um, how, how to best balance the two. You know, what are your thoughts on how to do this and, and, and what should they focus on first? Or do they need to focus on both at the same time? What are your thoughts? Well, I, th I, th I think I think they should focus on, and personally, from my perspective, I, th I think it's, it's we still the customer still require the human touch because that like customer service. When we talk about customer service, that's the human to human interaction that 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 which is so important, and and customers still looking for that even though we have been through a a, a pandemic and everybody now took, talks about the touchless. Uh, service points like we have the kiosks and we have the the, the mobile apps that you, they can go to to check in to to the doors and they get the bills and everything is is taken care of and they don't today we are at the point where, where customers or guests uh, literally don't have to really see anybody at the hotel they don't have to see the front desk they don't have to see the the, the the room service people they can just use the app and everything is put outside the door uh, digitalization or or the the the, the uh, automation or the rob robot or whatever they call want to call it is is serves a purpose for for collecting the data and 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 that's important it's a distinction between because the data is is that going to help us learn how we can improve the customer service for the future and and uh, and also but what I think is more important with, with the, the, the tools that we're using today, not only to improve the, the customer experience, but also like you said, to improve the employee experience. Because we, what we see now that we can do is we, we use communication internally to, to help the employees. Uh -oh. Oh, no. We lost his voice. Ari, we lost you. And he he okay. was getting to the climax of that. He was too. getting to the, yeah. Say, he was yeah, getting I was there. excited. Well, let's, well, let's, <laughs> hope Ari will join, he'll, he'll rejoin. Oh, there he is. He's back. Are you back? Okay. Yeah, we, 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 you had went out. Your, your mic had went out, Ari. So did you have a wrap up point? I'm sorry. Oh, where did he lose me here? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. You're back. Oh, okay. I don't know where you lost me. Yeah, you were you were still talking about the technology and and, and incorporating it uh, with the employee experience and and, and things of that. So that's probably that's about where you were. Yeah, I, I think that's important that we understand that the technology today is there to help the employees also. And, and uh, because we talked about earlier that, that Calvin said, uh, which I think was a great point that, that uh, we see that the lawyer to, to bring back employees today to the industry, uh, salaries is, is, is one key or, or, or wages, or whatever you want to call it. But I, I think that alone is not gonna do the trick. We have also had to focus on what other values can we do and a training, we have to make sure that we can put in way tools that help them with the skills to deal with the customer service issues that we're going to have and, and make sure that they, we can handle them effectively. Guest service recovery has been one of the biggest challenges for, for, for hotels in the past. Mm -hmm. Now with technology, we have every opportunity to limit the concerns uh, ahead of time. So we, if we are a little bit proactive, teach the employees, right empower them and give them the tools to communicate and, and learn from each other. Yes, I agree. Awesome. Calvin, you, you, you want, I know you, you have a tech background. Any, any comments sure. on this at all? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think it, it, again, it, it comes back to, um, 
there's too much in my opinion there's too much of a short-term focus on these type of things yeah. and it's it's all about immediate roi from yeah. from from ownership and and you know <laughs> people like that it's if, if, if we bring in this piece of technology, if we bring in something that's going to expedite check-ins or mobile check-in, the immediate follow-up to that is how many GSAs can we cut? Wow. And it's a completely wrong attitude, yeah. right? You know, to, to use uh, Holly's story before, what you, why not implement some technology that, that will create a mobile key <laughs> check-in, but turn all your GSAs into concierge? turn them in, into people who are experts on the property in the area so they can help deliver the, the customer service that's going to help those guests come back, right? It's, it's it. with, with too short-term short -term. thinking. And I, I have this conversation a lot and it's, uh, as it pertains to technology across the industry. And it's, it's, it's always, the immediate thought is always, how do I get that money back right now? How, how do, you know, how do I, if, 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 we, we, if we use this, we can replace X amount of people and save this amount of money. And we're not, we're not, you're not focused on delivering service at all. And that's what I meant at, at the beginning when, we, you know, this, the industry is just not focused on service, which is strange because we're the only ones supposed to be, that's built, <laughs> right. That's literally all we're here to do. <laughs> right. right. You know, and, and it's funny, you know, when we talked about the airlines, you don't necessarily get on a plane for the service, right? You get in there because you have some place to be. Right. So, which is why they kind of get away with a lot of what they've gotten away with over the years, because uh. You're, you're kind of tied to the fact that I need to be somewhere yes. by a certain time they're going there. So, you know, <laughs> hopefully it's not too bad. You know, yeah. hopefully I don't get beat up on the way, but you know what I mean? And yeah. As, yeah. as it pertains to me, you know, now in what I do with, with social media and trying to marry that too between, you know, hotels and, and, the, and the tech side, it's, it's always still has to be focused on the human and, and, and on the guest, yes. you know, um, and, and it's even a great way to inspire your, your employees. You know, I, I gave an example. I just moved here to LA and I drive by the LA convention center quite a bit. They have a huge billboard right outside that says, uh, please, please help us celebrate our manager of the quarter. And they have his name up there and there's like digital, wow. you know, confetti and stuff like that. This is a convention cool. center. What I have never seen a hotel, social media account do the same thing for an employee. Why not? That will do two things. Number one, that's going to motivate the employee that gives them, you know, that recognition in front of however many thousand followers you have, and it gives them their 15 minutes of Insta fame, which everybody loves. Right. And it also gives the, the guest a friendly face to look for when they show up. Right. Let's mm -hmm. say that person is is a housekeeper or, you know, in the restaurant, they may mm -hmm. recognize that person when they show up and like, Hey, I saw you. I, I saw you wanted a word that happened to me a, mm -hmm. a while ago. I, there was, um, it was actually a, a one of the, the OTA um, channels, one of their uh, social media channels. And, and they, had a picture of somebody who had won an award and she got flowers. And the next time I visited, which was months later, I was like, Hey, I recognize you. Wow. You, you won some kind of award. And she was like, yeah, that was a while ago. Oh my God. You know what I mean? But imagine that interaction between a guest and a customer that makes right. both people feel good. That gives, you know, and again, it's about that warm interaction and mm -hmm. that's how you create it on, on your tech side, on your social media, you need to get past the, simple pictures of the pictures of your of your bedroom or your pool Every, you can get that on the website yes you know social yes. media is, is a place yes. for you to be able to dig deeper and and get it show your more authentic personal side which is what this business is all about yeah well you know what great comments Calum. since we're talking about social media let's 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 go ahead and go right into that okay because i think we're, we're, we're all in this space and we're, we're, we're all trying to figure things out from a technology standpoint. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, let's talk about the impact of social media and, and how it has and will continue to have an impact on our industry. You know, all indicators point to, you know, customers expecting the same level of service online in response times and everything uh, when they reach out to you via social media. Do you see this trend continuing? Um, and, and how can the hospitality owners and operators leverage this, this medium? Well, I think you I, yeah. yeah, I mean, a hundred percent, um, it, it's going to continue. It's not going anywhere. I mean, Instagram is barely, is maybe 10, 11 years old. You know, I always make the joke that I got married before Instagram, Instagram came out, you know, I have no wedding photos on Instagram. It just didn't exist. 
right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So it's it's this is it's still new. And while yes, there's that may be an excuse for us as an industry or some other industries to not quite fully grasp it yet. It's still fairly new. Um, I mean, I, I think at this point, if you're not on social media, you're not active, you're not promoting your business on social media, you're getting left behind, period. You know, we had a conversation, I had a conversation recently about Gen Z and, and, and them entering the travel space. They're going to find you on Instagram. They're going to follow influencers or, or, or different things that are, that this is how they're going to find their hotels. And mm -hmm. if you're not there, you're lost. You can just forget it. You know, um, and this this is where the guest is going to get get the first uh, impression of your property. This is where the guest got the customer journey starts. Now, it's not when they pick up a phone to call. It's not when they walk through the door at the front desk, as we've always liked to say. You know, front desk is the first person to to you know touch the guest. It's going to be on on Instagram now when they find your hotel, and you know, and they leave a comment, and you don't respond, you lost. Yeah. You lost. Yeah. You know, I'll give an example. I um, I was working with a client some some months ago, and just as a test throughout the process, <laughs> this is this is a, a a hotel chain that's promoting themselves as tech forward. You know, when you show up, everything is mobile. There's no one at the front desk. You just go straight to your room. So I tested the app. I, I sent the message uh, to the app. Simple question: How much for a room at this property at this location? It took a full day to get a response. And the response was, please, please call the property at this number. <laughs> I, I mean, can you drop the ball any more than that? And, yeah, you, yeah. you know, this again, you, you're promoting yourself as tech forward, as, as tech savvy. An mm -hmm. app, people expect quick responses. You may get an hour tops to, to respond to that message, especially if the message is, hey, uh, give us a call and we can walk you through it. Especially mm -hmm. if it's as simple as that, that needs to be manned. But again, we go back to the issue where social media and tech is not embraced. It's treated as an afterthought and it's all about ROI. So what's, what likely is, is going on is that person is a, is a GSA at the front desk. They were busy checking in people and then they're like, oh man, I, I have to check the app too. I forgot about that. As opposed to having someone designated to doing that job. Yes. Right. It's, it's we, we're asking people to do four or five different things and then wondering why we're not getting ahead in, in, that, right. in that way. Yeah. Great points. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to respond to that for a minute, because I think that that designated person is so important and it doesn't have to be the same designated person. You can switch it out. You just have to, like, go in some office in the back. You're designated for that for an hour or two. And then you go back in the front or however you're whoever is designated to do that. You can switch that up, but you got to do it because people want it instant. Now, yes. and it, what it also does, it kind of breaks it up so you can do one thing a little bit, another thing a little bit, and you have a little bit more energy to do it, you know, so I think that's a great idea, but that's incredibly important. There's also the other piece of like answering those emails. People actually yes. still send emails. They send texts. It's not just on social media. It's like, it's just digital period. And there needs to be people who can respond to that. And it, it's kind of like, you know, those hotels who used to do, oh, just press one for, you know, everything that you need. But <laughs> no one knew, no one knew anything. Right. So you press one and there was a human, but they, they didn't know anything. So it wasn't terribly helpful. So Anyway, I, I think it's, it's also, you know, I, I guess we're going to, well, we, we, we do want to touch on this, I know, about the difference between ex customer experience and customer Yes, service, yes, we've got to talk right? about, yes. Because the, I think it segues perfectly, but it's something I just thought of, too, is like, all right, what kind of customer experience do you want to have? There isn't one kind. There's all kinds. And you decide, you choose. So you, you know, like the customer experience that you have at A4 Seasons is a very different customer experience than you might have at a Hampton Inn. And they're both perfectly great. They're just a decision. And it's a brand and it's, it's your brand and it's your decision and what you're going to do with it. So, I mean, 
you know, and who your customer is. Like I, right. I, I checked into a hotel in New York once and it was all over. We call them and it'd be like, oh, we're at the confluence of, <laughs> you know, of shopping and entertainment. And I'd be like, I wish you were at the confluence of a bellman and a doorman. <laughs> yes, I've been out playing for hours and I'm slapping my own luggage and no one's there to open the door. So I don't oh, really wow. care what confluence you're in. There's exactly. A I would rather that you were. But exactly. I, I, you know, I also think like, you know, when, when you make decisions, it's funny, I didn't know I talked so much about the concierge, but you know, it is in my heart. It's like, you make a, you make a decision. We're going to use a kiosk instead of a concierge. We're going to outsource. We're going to have the gray line tour desk be our mm -hmm. concierge, you know, right. I, I can remember just a great story. It's like, it's a decision. So the general manager of one, of one hotel that made this decision said, Hey, um, called, uh, our desk and said, Hey, can you get us um, tea times at Pebble beach? And, you know, we got it, but we wanted to say, why don't you ask your gray line tour to do that for you? Right? I almost said it for you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because, you know, it's like, yeah. what, what experience do you want to offer? Because yes. of course, customer service is a transaction and customer experience is thinking about something other than your transaction. It's your experience yeah. and yeah. how somebody yeah. feels. So yes. that's yes. the real difference. But, you know, you have to make the decision of who your customer is and what you want to offer them first. That's your yes. first decision. Then yes. you figure out everything else. Yes, Holly, you, you touched on something let's clear up something really quickly. Ari, I want to give you an opportunity to, to, to respond to that, but, but you, could you also follow up because there does seem to be a lot of confusion, not only in the hotel industry, but a lot of industries, the difference between customer experience and customer service. Could you help clear that up? Um, and, and also, if you wanted to respond to the last question uh, regarding social <coughs> Yeah, I, I can start with the first is that uh, like the difference between customer service and customer experience. And of, like I said earlier, customer service represents the individual human to human touch points uh, uh, where you kind of uh, typically a customer service is either advice or assistance uh, in person, over the phone, or on the web. Uh, what we saw in the past is like, uh, and this goes a little bit into to, to the some of the touch points that, that, that Holly was saying, it's like in the past, what where we got the information from was to guest service indexes. We, we sent out surveys or we was in four groups and we get it in the aftermath, the results from, from that, those, in the, those surveys. Now we get everything, with, with the, everything we now get this in, in real time and the guest service index typically summed up, that was the sum of the guest service index, either you get the 10, nine or one, that sum represent the guest service experience or the guest experience. And that you will see also reflected typically on the review, uh, what the customer meant. Now it's a little bit more complex because the DSI also still is, 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 is relevant. Now we have social media, uh, we have chatbots, we have, all these live events like here. Uh, so, so the guest experience now includes so much more. And, and that's why it's so important that, that we use all this, like, like Calvis was input. We have to, to leverage like today because the, because the engagement is, is in real time. We have to must monitor the customer behavior, of course. And we have to also encourage the, the employee experience to like, Calories, what's in, uh, pointed out, we, how can we celebrate the employees in the moment? Not, not next week, not two weeks from now, but every moment is an opportunity to, 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 to celebrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, we know that the cost, uh, positive experience, as we call it today, that, that is, is more likely to create the loyal customers. And that's what yeah. we want to do. So we have to think about the customer service and the customer experience, and and uh, because we customer service is important because one simple act, mm -hmm. as Holly was into, it, one simple act can change the outcome of the total co customer experience. And that's yes. what we come into the consumer service recovery often is what what would change the the, the outcome. So so 
the, those was the point that I think is important to, to, to see in context with what Holly and, and Calvin also was talking about. Okay, well, that's awesome, man. I, I really, I, I really, you know, I w I'm sure that people listening in us <laughs> would love to be able to keep going and, and talk to all of you, but I think we're down to probably our last minute or so. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you guys for, for sharing your insights and your, and your expertise. Um, it was a pleasure to moderate this, this panel, and I want to thank the, the InnoVac um, show um, organizers for giving us an opportunity to share your thoughts. So I want to open up for any questions um, before we close out. Anyone who wanted to ask any questions that's listening in? Well, I think that is it. That's going to close the panel. Again, thank you all for part of your participation, and um, um, I, I hope that we stay connected past this conference. Thank you so much. You thank want to enjoy you. the rest Absolutely. of the day. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Okay. Right. Pleasure. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye.